Welcome to China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. Our top story, Warren Buffett's company is selling off more of its stake in Chinese carmaker BYD. The latest round brings the holding company's total sell-off to over 60 percent. A new report says China is racing ahead in the nuclear energy race. A look at some of the numbers and what they mean. China says it's investigating European port imports. That probe in retaliation for the European Union imposing tariffs on Chinese-made electric cars. And Chinese officials appearing to block an Australian journalist's view during the Chinese premier's visit. She had spent three years in a Chinese prison when relations between the two countries took a plunge. A move that has investors sitting up and taking notice. Warren Buffett's company Berkshire Hathaway is selling shares of the Chinese EV giant BYD again. As of now, it has sold about two-thirds of its shares in the Chinese carmaker. Berkshire sold over one million shares in the Chinese company last week. The news comes from a filing this Monday with the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. It's unclear if the company sold a stake for profit or out of concerns about the EV market. NTD reached out to Berkshire for comment but did not hear back before airtime. Including the latest round, the holding company has now sold off more than 66 percent of its BYD shares. Late last year, BYD surpassed Tesla as the world's largest EV maker. Though Tesla clenched the title again in the first quarter this year. President Biden said in May that he would quadruple tariffs on Chinese electric vehicles from 25 percent to 100 percent. And starting this July, the European Commission would slap up to 38 percent duties on imported electric cars from China. Back in the U.S., Biden ordered an investigation into Chinese-made smart cars in February. His aides said Chinese cars collect lots of data on their American drivers and American roads and could send that data back to China. Another concern is bad actors could control the cars remotely, effectively disabling certain functions while cars are on the road. Warren Buffett's company started investing in BYD back in 2008. It bought over 200 million shares, about 10 percent of the company. The investment was backed by Charlie Munger, the company's late vice chairman. Buffett told investors before that Munger urged him to invest in BYD. Berkshire started selling those shares in 2022, at a time when BYD's shares price had increased 20-fold. Buffett said this May that Berkshire would keep investing mainly in the U.S. and that BYD was an exception. BYD stocks were up over 1.7 percent in overseas trading Monday. A new report says the U.S. is as many as 15 years behind China in developing high-tech nuclear power plants. The study by the Information Technology and Innovation Foundation came out on Monday. It says China has 27 nuclear reactors under construction with average construction timelines of about seven years, far faster than other countries. The report states the swift rollout may save costs in the long run and it allows the sector to gain experience. It predicts Chinese companies will continue to improve the power plants at a faster pace than other nations. The U.S. Defense Department said it will not be installing Chinese-made solar panels on the rooftop of the Pentagon. The statement is in response to a letter from Virginia Governor Glenn Youngkin. Last week, Youngkin expressed concerns over a $104 million taxpayer-funded plan to buy solar cells for 31 government sites. He said the move could pose national security threats if the products were sourced from China. In the letter, Youngkin urged Washington to make purchases from verified American manufacturers with reliable supply chains. Responding to the latest statement, a spokesperson from the governor's office said he's pleased that the department will follow his recommendation. China is now investigating imported pork and its byproducts from the European Union. Here's the EU response. We're not the least bit worried because uh, not all subsidies uh, are the same. Uh, uh, and any uh, subsidies that take place uh, under the common agricultural policy or indeed in any other uh, policy area in the European Union uh, are strictly in line with our WTO obligations. 
The Chinese regime's investigation is in response to EU curbs on its electric vehicle exports. Europe says it will impose anti-subsidy duties of up to 38 percent on imported Chinese cars. Global food companies have been on high alert for retaliatory tariffs from China. Spain exports the most pork to China out of all EU countries and called for negotiations to avoid Chinese tariffs. The investigation will focus on pork intended for human consumption, such as fresh, cold and frozen whole cuts, as well as pig intestines, bladders and stomachs. The probe begins Monday. The EU said it would ensure the investigation complies with all World Trade Organization rules. Peace for Ukraine pushed in a Swiss summit. 78 countries attending the event signed a final joint communique over the weekend. The measure calls Russia's invasion a war and reflects Ukraine's positions. Moscow and its ally China did not attend. Here are the details. The vast majority of more than 90 countries attending a Swiss summit on peace for Ukraine supported its final declaration as it concluded on Sunday. I'm confident that together we will ensure the result, the first and the second peace summits should unite our joint work on the details of peace. Many Western leaders voiced condemnation of Russia's invasion and rejected President Vladimir Putin's demands for parts of Ukraine as a condition for peace. However, some countries attended the summit did not put their name to the communique, including Mexico, Saudi Arabia and India. There was no clarity on whether future talks would involve Russia. Moscow, which was not invited, labelled the summit a waste of time. China was another notable absentee. The conference nevertheless underscored both the broad support Ukraine still enjoys from its allies, but also the challenges for any lasting ceasefire. A draft of the final declaration seen by Reuters refers to Russia's invasion as a war, a label Moscow rejects. China announced it wouldn't join the summit, declining because Russia was not invited. Beijing's snub was interpreted as a decision to side with Russia. Australia is expanding military-to-military communication with China. Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese said he discussed the matter with Chinese Premier Li Qiang in Canberra Monday. Li has extended an offer to Australia, a new pair of giant pandas, along with 15-day visa-free entry to China for all Australians. Australia is a top U.S. security ally. Albanese said the improved communication with the Chinese military is to avoid incidents. That's after earlier friction between Chinese and Australian troops in international waters. Beyond that, Albanese and Li also talked about trade, investment and human rights issues. Beijing blocked $20 billion worth of goods from Australia and cut off talks between their defense chiefs back in 2020. Worth noting, hundreds of demonstrators gathered outside Australia's parliament during the top meeting. So the Prime Minister has invited uh, Li Chiang to Australia and the Tibetans, Uyghurs, Chinese democracy activists, the Falun Gong, we're here to tell the Prime Minister that it cannot be business as usual with the Chinese regime. The human rights abuses inside Tibet cannot be ignored, that we need to make human rights an important part of our relationship with China. Some demonstrators added that that should not take precedence over human rights. Albanese has been working on thawing ties with China since he took office. Most of the trade barriers Beijing imposed on Australian goods have been lifted since he was elected. Li Qiang will next visit Malaysia before returning to China. A video clip is sparking speculation. Chinese officials appear to have blocked journalist Cheng Lei from observing a meeting between the Chinese Premier and Australian Prime Minister Monday. Cheng was released last year after spending three years in a Chinese prison. She was arrested in Beijing while relations between the two countries took a plunge. She now works for Sky News. But it shows a Chinese official blocking Chen's view. An Australian official later tried to ask him to move to the side, but he didn't budge. Albanese said he didn't see the incident. The latest flare-up in the South China Sea has nations there and Western allies on high alert. A Chinese vessel reportedly collided with a Philippine supply ship near the Spratly Islands on Monday local time. And the Philippines is blaming China. 
The Chinese Coast Guard said a Philippine supply ship entered waters near the Second Thomas Shoal and disregarded China's directives to keep out. Meanwhile, the Philippine military called the Chinese Coast Guard's report deceptive and misleading and said it would not discuss operational details about the legal mission. The Philippines says the area falls within its internationally recognized exclusive economic zone and calls the shoal by a different name. Beijing also lays claim to it, though a 2016 international tribunal deemed that invalid. The United States, Canada, Japan and the Philippines are currently conducting a two-day joint maritime exercise. The U.S. Pacific Fleet said on its website that the collision incident happened inside Manila's exclusive economic zone. We're on the ongoing saga of U.S.-China tensions. We recently discussed the core issues with America's China policies with Brad Good, founder of the China Declaration and author of The China Affairs. Next, we welcome him back to the show to delve deeper into the issues with a message for all Americans. Brad Good, thank you so much for joining us. Great to have you back on the show. Thank you for having me. Now, there are reports of, say, the Thrift Savings Retirement Plan that's for former U.S. and military employees that supposedly poured like $1 trillion of investment into China. Now, these are former government employees. I think this goes back to your earlier point of how Mike Pompeo was, say, educating Americans on the atrocities committed under these authoritarian regimes. How do we get to that where Americans are learning what they're up against? I think that's why the first step needs for President Donald Trump to write this document or declaration with the rest of the leaders to convalesce people's mentality, to say, look at all the problems, look at all these, these, these symptoms. And the real problem is the, the Chinese Communist Party, and there's a huge risk in dealing with China. And so then Trump would need to get together some people to develop some initiatives that reinforce that, okay? And some of the initiatives should be very simple initiatives, like close all the Chinese consulates in America because you're scared they'll hurt or influence or target Chinese nationals that are in America. And Let's close the ones in China, Americans in China. We don't need a $500 million embassy in Beijing. Now, if it were up to me, I would sanction the whole National Congress members and up. They're the ones that under the Constitution in China, Article 63, can actually remove uh, Xi from his presidency. But you seize their assets in the United States, France, Germany, and you, you make their kids go home. No education in America to senior Communist Party members. The sanctioning never has worked. Um, China never has, has uh, lived up to any single agreement they've made. So the blinking going over there to talk to them. It just it just doesn't doesn't make sense because they're not going to agree to anything. So I think that's the sort of strategy. But you need a strategy. You need an initiatives behind it. And you need really flawless execution. And that's missing right now. Right now it's button. Given how U.S. policy towards China has been in the past, what is your message to, say, the average American who wants to see change done but maybe feels like they'll have to wait till one day the government wakes up? My message to your average American, I don't think there's an average American, but my, my, my message to all Americans is uh, start demanding a comprehensive strategy toward the Chinese Communist Party leadership and stop talking about balloons. Stop asking the question, what should we do about Taiwan? But rather first ask, what should we do about the cause of that entire situation? And I say that to all news broadcasters around the world. We're not paying to the right, paying attention to the right, the right problem and issue and not planning accordingly, and it's just going to continue. And I, I'm here to, I, I like to solve problems, not describe symptoms, right? Brad, good. Thank you so much for your time. 
Thank you very much. That's all for today's China In Focus on YouTube. We're now sharing a shortened version of our program here after being demonetized for three years. If you'd like to support us, consider donating. Find us at donorbox.org slash China dash in dash focus or subscribe to our partner platform Epic TV where you can watch our full episodes. Just click the link down below. Here's what to look out for in our second half. Best people around the world celebrate and honor their fathers. One father and son remain separated by the walls of a Chinese prison. European lawmakers condemning the Chinese Communist Party for its persecution of the family. Federal regulators are investigating how titanium parts with fake quality records wound up in Boeing and Airbus jets and where the materials came from. And an alert from British spy agency MI5 branding one woman a Chinese agent involved in political interference activities on behalf of the Chinese Communist Party. More on that after the break here on China in Focus. Thanks for watching China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. See you tomorrow. Is it really just about money? Are there other parts at stake? Chinese influence was playing into what we see in U.S. films. China said, you can't have that in there. And Hollywood listened. This is insane. And we all know that their goal is global domination. People have been brainwashed without knowing it.